What's going on hustlers? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Day Cantave. I am a multi-million dollar government contractor, a commercial multi-engine pilot, and I am an endurance runner. So if you're looking for information on government contracting, if you're getting started in your government contracting journey and you're looking for guidance, or if you just want some, some business value entertainment, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about a bunch of different pricing strategies on how to price different products to the federal government as you bid on these contracts. Some things to keep in mind and all that good stuff. But before we get into that, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any constructive criticism or feedback, please comment down below because I always enjoy hearing from you guys and interacting with you guys. Before we get into that, I wanna show you guys this because I know you guys have seen it in the background when it pans, like when, when, I, switch, when I switch cameras. So that says second place, 2024 Vero Beach Unite for Answers 5K overall mail. You guys been seeing the medals behind me. You guys know your boy be running, but now I'm starting to get podiums. Now I'm starting to get fast enough to get podiums. So I just really wanted to just show you guys that. I always enjoy sharing my, my successes with you guys because you guys motivate me so much, but I just wanted to show you guys that. So today we're gonna be pulling information directly from my product bid pricing guide. Now, I'm gonna go over kind of like an overview of, of everything that's on here. And I'm gonna go over a lot of the most important things to consider, all the good facts and, and stuff like that. But if you're looking for access to the actual product bid pricing guide itself, everybody who signs up uh, as a student or a client, they get access to, to all of that stuff. But if you're not looking for anything like that and you're just kind of trying to bootstrap it, then by all means, just continue watching all my free stuff. But if you're looking for something a bit more tailored, if you're looking for something a bit more concise, uh, specific to your business, then click the link down below and book a call. So let's get straight into the video. First things first, this is just an advisory guide. Like pricing is literally an art form. It's not a one size fits all thing. I will use this expression a lot for anybody that's been in any of our, our boot camps, anybody that's met me at a conference. I always say winning your first contract is like hunting a deer and then everything that you do leading up to that is like following the deer tracks in the snow. So basically like doing your market research, looking at the procurement history, all that stuff is like tracking the deer in the snow and then how you price the product and how you price the bid essentially is going to be like the rifle that you use to shoot the deer, the bow and arrow, if you're old school, if you're like Daryl from The Walking Dead. It's kind of morbid, I know, but you wouldn't be watching this channel if you liked me for my political correctness because we all know that's not the case. So let's talk about some of the actual principles of, of pricing. This is a really, really big one. A lot of people, they voice their concerns to me and they're like, well, the price is so different. And then I'm like, well, let's look at this one big factor. Quantity and price have an inverse relationship. The more you buy of something, the cheaper it gets. Okay, if you buy 20 rolls of toilet paper and they're 50 cents each, but you only buy five rolls of toilet paper and they're $2 each, it makes complete sense because companies have an opportunity cost whenever they purchase the material to manufacture the, uh, the products. So quantity and price have an inverse relationship. As quantity goes up, price goes down. So if you're buying something or requesting a quote on something and you're only getting half of the quantity that the government last purchased, don't be mad when your pricing is not super, super cheap and competitive as opposed to the last procurement. It's completely normal. And then number two, DLA reasonably expects an increase in price year over year. So there's a couple different things that they use to base this increase in price. Back in the old days, and I made a video similar to this many, many months ago, many, many moons ago, when I was not as well versed in teaching as I was now, and prior to me going to two other uh, DLA trainings. So it used to be that they used an increase of three to five percent year over year just due to inflation, right? And you can still use that as a rule of thumb. But the real sauce, the real joy, is you gotta use the PPI. 
I know, I said PP. The producer price index. The producer price index is published by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. How it works is everything is categorized by NAICS code. And you guys know here when we deal with products and stuff, we use FSC codes, NAICS codes are kind of BS. But we are the only people that pretty much operate on that principle in the government contracting world. Everybody else, they use federal supply class codes. So how it works is you would go and you would take your FSC code, find the corresponding NAICS code, go look in the producer price index and look at the year over year change or increase in price. So if something had a 19% increase in price in 2024 as opposed to 2023 and the price that you are getting on your product as opposed is significantly higher as opposed to the price that you saw from the last procurement four years ago, don't freak out. It's completely normal. A lot of you guys get completely dejected whenever you see that and you're like, oh, this sucks. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. Well, that tells me two things. One, you didn't want it bad enough. And two, whoever you're getting your information from failed you. That's why you're watching this video. Now let's talk about another principle of pricing. Every seven to 10 years, something really, really crazy happens. Like I'm talking about think 9-11, think the economic uh, crash, the housing market crash uh, 2008, think COVID. So the last one, the freshest one is COVID. We're probably due for another one and like, I don't know, COVID was really bad. So I'll be like conservative and say like four to six years, but we are due for another one and definitely within the next decade. So whenever we're on the other side of a major economical and historical event, it completely disrupts economies. So keep in mind that anything that was procured, when you look at the procurement history, prior to March 2020, the price that you're gonna get in 2024 is gonna be significantly diff different. There could have been mergers, there could have been acquisitions, companies could have gone out of business, new companies could have came into the market. The people who procured the natural goods of all the material and all that shit, they might've gone out of business. Hell, they might've died, bro. They might've died. So now somebody might have a monopoly on it and it's significantly more expensive. So keep that in mind as well if you're getting your pricing and then it's significantly more expensive than the last procurement and it was before March of 2020, that's entirely reasonable and plausible. And then another flip side of it, if your pricing is way cheaper than it was in 2020, listen, I'm a capitalist. I believe that everybody should make as much money as they can. And if you see that the last procurement was prior to 2020 and it was really cheap and you're, you've got great pricing, but you wanna charge the government a lot more or a little more, however much more you decide, put on your, your big boy pants as a business owner and make that decision. If you decide, that you want to charge the government a lot more post COVID. You didn't hear it from me, but you're more than welcome to do that. I, I support that. Now, um, I do talk about like a number that you can use as kind of like a baseline, but that's kind of like my secret sauce. So um, we won't go over that. But what I will do is I'll tell you that if there is no procurement history, I, and when I said a number, I meant like a, a sweet spot for how much I mark up products, but um, we go over that like in depth and like bootcamp and stuff. So if you're looking for like a number, click the link down below, book a call. However, what do you do if there's no procurement history and you don't know what to do? Congratulations, you get to contribute to America's extremely wasteful, but even significantly more profitable military industrial complex. And believe me, I'm not knocking it. Like you guys see that flag up there. I love America, bro. I love America. The military industrial complex pays my bills. I'm not hating on it, but we got to call a spade a spade. We are extremely wasteful as, as a country. So pretty much whenever you come across a contract with no procurement history, you're literally in what I call no man's land. You have no point of reference and you literally don't know what your profit margin has to be for it to be worth your time because you're brand new. So you don't know how much manpower it's gonna take you to package. Some people I work with, they just get the packaging thing, bro. Like they're two instances, boom. Like they, they read the document twice and they're like, all right, fuck it, let's go. And then some people they're like, hey dude, can you hold my hand through this a little bit? I don't get it. So if it takes you more time to do it, then that means it's less time you can bid on contracts. So maybe you need a higher profit margin to make it worth your time. So that way the opportunity cost you invoke is worth it. Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. This is the last thing I'll tell you and then I'll end the video here. We'll keep this under 12 minutes. Before I say this one, I have to give a shout out to the, the software company that sponsors all of my videos that I believe in wholeheartedly. I wouldn't endorse them if I didn't think that they were one of the best companies out there on the market. This video is sponsored by Lucy, the all-in-one government contracting software. You can track your bids, you can track your sales pipeline. They have contacts for all the approved sources. You can literally separate stuff that's that you wanna bid on 
be a whole bunch of different categories. You have all these different metrics. FOB origin, is the approved source bidding on it? Is it inspection origin? Does it require ISO search? You can you can search by all those things. So I'm gonna roll this little clip, show you guys all of Lucy's capabilities, and then we'll come back and then I'll give you my last tip of information. Introducing Lucy, the best all-in-one software for DLA div suppliers and contractors. Let's check out some of the top features. In the market research section, search and find RFQs with various search parameters including estimate contract price, FSC codes, tech docs, ISO JCT flags, and much more. Click on NSN to open the NSN dialog for quick access to NSN history, approved sources, and more. Click on approved source cage code to view company details. And finally, add as many filters as you like and save your searches for quick access. You can save as many searches as you like with different search parameters. Once ready to bid, simply do one-click copy RFQ to your CLM bidding board. Now let's check out CLM and bid management features. Bidding workspace will help you stay organized, track your bids, and speed up the bidding process. Now let's look at the solicitation we just copied over in detail view. System recognized the associated suppliers were given an SN product and automatically placed them in the supplier codes table so we can go through and request codes from all the relevant suppliers were given an SN product. Once the supplier is chosen, simply select it in the product details section. Notice most of the information will be pre-filled in from the contract. Then go to the service details section to enter all other costs including shipping price and any associated labor costs. System will do all the calculations and show us the summary of our bid price, margin, and the profit at the top. We can also attach any relevant documents in the files section and take notes to track the progress of the specific contract. Once ready, simply place your bid in dibs and change the status to bid placed in Lucy and move on to the next one. All right, boom, we're back. So what happens after we've gone over the Lucy stuff? What happens if your bid was unsuccessful and you get the all too frequent? Your bid was unsuccessful. So DLA will normally tell you that none of the quotes that they received within the time frame were good enough and they want you to resubmit and offer your best price if able. So a lot of times people are like, holy shit, I gotta cut my price in half. Not true, bro. Like, take it from me, not true. Sometimes you only have to drop it by mere pennies. I lost contracts, and if you go back and watch some of my other videos, like in my in my GovCon tutorials playlist on my channel, you will literally see I have lost contracts by literally pennies on the dollar. I remember one time I was selling these inverters, and I was making a killing on these, bro, and this company knew that I was, and I gotta make a profit, bro. So I marked it up quite nicely because I was the only one that could get it, and this company beat me by offering it for 99 cents less than me, and I lost. So then the next time around, I undercut them so bad that I knew that there was no way they were gonna be able to beat me. But circling back to our story, in the event that you get the, your bid was unsuccessful email, don't chop your price in half. Just lower your bid by like a couple pennies and still preserve your profit mark. All DLA really wants to do is spur more competition. We're a capitalistic society, so our goal is to make as much revenue while also solving as many problems for the customer as possible. That is, if you're ethical, which I'm hoping that everybody watching this is ethical. So those are my tips on uh, product bid pricing. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video informative, if you like this kind of content, if you're beginning your government contracting journey and you're looking for some guidance on it, like, comment, subscribe. Please leave any comments or constructive criticism. I love hearing the feedback from you guys on how we can make these videos better. And not only am I looking forward to your success, I am absolutely sure of it. Let's go print those dollars.